Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q1 FY24 earnings conference call for Prince Pipes and Fittings Limited, hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Arun Baird from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of ICIC Securities, I welcome you all to the Q1 FI24 result post-con call. From the management side, we have Neha Sheda, Mr. Sham Sharda, and Mr. Anand Gupta. Now I hand over the call to Neha for opening remarks, most of which the floor will be open for Q&A. Over to you, Neha. Thank you, Arun, uh, and thank you all for joining Prince Pipe's uh, Quarter 1 FI24 earnings call. Uh, the presentation and press release have been issued to the stock exchanges and uploaded on our website. I uh, hope everyone has uh, been able to go through the same. Uh, during this quarter, we have uh, demonstrated encouraging operational results uh, despite our performance being materially disrupted um, as we witnessed numerous transitioning challenges due to the ERP upgradation. Uh, this ERP implementation had an impact on our volumes as well as our product mix and pipe fitting ratios since the dispatches of fittings uh, faced major challenges. This unfavorable product mix and pipe fitting ratio led to significantly lower margins. As of today, these challenges are now behind us and the pipe fitting ratio uh, should normalize from this quarter onwards. As operations stabilized, we were quick to enhance focus on execution and improve volumes. Thus, in Q1, we have delivered a healthy volume growth year-on-year, year, despite the operational challenges. This was also the highest June quarter volume in the history of prints, despite the bottlenecks. It was encouraging to witness volume growth across our segments of plumbing, SWR, agriculture, as well as infrastructure. Before giving you all um, an outlook on the business, I would like to welcome Mrs. Amisha Vora, Chairman and MD of Prabhudas Liladar, uh, to our board. Mrs. Vora is a highly acknowledged equity market veteran with 35 plus years of experience in the capital markets. Uh, Mrs. Vora has been a member of the CII Capital Markets Committee since the past five years, and we look forward to her valuable inputs um, on the board towards our business strategy, as well as our journey of value creation. Moving on to the business outlook, which continues to be positive, because polymer prices remain affordable, and economic activity remains healthy across urban and rural India. We are confident that the buoyancy in demand will continue across segments of building material, agriculture, as well as infrastructure. Further, a transition in demand towards branded products will continue to lead uh, to healthy traction for preferred brands like Prince. Coming to the bathware segment, uh, we have launched our collection of luxury faucets and sanitary wear. This launch was done in Goa at our Pan-India Distributor Conference, followed by a Pan-India Sales Team Meet. We have received an encouraging response from our distribution network, um, which was present at the launch event. Um, we are now even more confident of scaling this distribution network for bathware over the next two quarters. The bathware range includes nine different collections of world-class faucets and sanitary wear across different price points. The concept of a, a bathroom has evolved uh, to becoming a lifestyle solution in recent years, with homeowners seeking to make a statement in technology enhancements uh, as well as aesthetics. Uh, with this move, Prince makes a presence uh, in the front of the wall category, which complements our growth strategy to offer complete water solutions. 
few more updates on Bathware. Uh, the state level teams are in place, and the Bathware warehouses at the Dadra facility and in Morbi are now functional. Happy to share uh, that we have received our first order for Bathware in the month of August, uh, which has already been dispatched. Moving on to the water tanks vertical, uh, as of the last fiscal, we had started in-house manufacturing in Dadra, Jaipur, and Telangana facilities. We plan to expand our manufacturing footprint for tanks in the Haridwar and Chennai facilities in the second half of the current fiscal. The orders for these uh, machines for these two facilities have been placed in this month. This will help us truly leverage our multi-location manufacturing network to scale the tanks business going forward. Next, I would like to give an update on our eighth manufacturing facility in Bihar. I am happy to announce that we have successfully acquired land in an industrial complex and will commence construction soon. This plant will cater to demand in East India, which is a major frontier of growth for the nation as well as for our industry going forward. This move will not only lead to savings in freight costs, but also superior service to the fast-growing Eastern market. Over the years, we have integrated our sustainability goals and business strategy. We extend this same ESG focus to our new business of bathware. I am happy to announce that our crystal range of faucets has received Griha certification. As a result, any builder installing our crystal faucets collection would earn green points for their green projects. Such certifications will help us cement ourselves as a preferred brand in the bathware segment over the long term. Lastly, I am also happy to share that Prince Pipes has sponsored the latest film of our brand ambassador, Akshay Kumar, whom I got to. Uh, this strategy of film association started in 2019 when we sponsored Mission Mangal. Then in 2021, when we associated with the blockbuster Surya Vanshi, and now in continuation, Akshay Kumar continues to be the face of Prince Pipes through OMG2. Through this, we have created strong visibility in our focus markets across India. These film associations uh, not only help us build brand equity, but also help us engage with retailers and plumbers across urban and rural India. In conclusion, I am extremely optimistic about the growth of India over the next few years. We are geared up to aggressively participate in India's growth journey, which is happening at breakneck speed. Now, with our presence across pipes, water tanks, and bathware segment, we are geared up to strengthen India's water infrastructure during this crucial phase of growth for the Indian economy. Thank you for your time and mind share. Uh, I will now hand over to Anand to take you through the financial performance. Thanks, Niyar, and good morning, friends. I'll be taking you through Q1 FY24 financials now. For Q1 FY24, revenue stood at 554 crores. Sales volume grew by healthy 19% year-on-year at 37,155 metric ton. For Q1 FY24, EBITDA stood at Rs. 45 crores as compared to Rs. 44 crores in Q1 FY23. EBITDA margin for Q1 FY24 were at 8.1% and were better year-on-year, -year, but got adversely impacted due to unfavorable product mix, pie-fitting ratio, and also on account of ERP issues leading to dispatch of fittings. PAT reported at Rs 20 crores compared to 16 crores in Q1 FY23, and it has an improvement of 25% year-on-year. Networking capital days were at 59 days as of June 23, as compared to 57 days in March 23. Uh, during uh, ERP migration, the credit control activity was not fully operational, uh, due to which data days increased to 64 days in June 23 from 56 days in March 23. We acknowledge that the data days needs to be tightly controlled 
and that there is significant scope for improvement and we are continuously working towards the same. As we had guided earlier, we would not shy to keep optimal finished goods inventory to service healthy demand. Inventory days stood at 73 days as on June 23 from 57 days in March 23 and 78 days in June 23. We expect the polymer price for next few months to be stable. In channel finance program, we have made steady progress since the recourse has shifted to distributors. We have increased the credit limits of our channel partners from 70 crores to 105 crores. And the number of channel partners engaged in this program has increased from 76 to 132. We maintained our net cash position at rupees 164 crores as of June 23. With this, we would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Mr. Achal Lohade from GM Financial. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you know, in terms of the volume outlook, uh, can you can you help us uh, understand how July has been and uh, uh, how the trends in terms of plumbing and agri uh, you're looking at? And uh, a, a broader sense in terms of the... Uh, uh, volume growth guidance for next uh, three to five years, uh, and and um, you know in terms of uh, competitive intensity, do you see um, uh, it increasing given everybody is uh, adding capacities? Uh, could there be a, a risk to the uh, pricing stroke margins? So um, I think let me answer short term first and then move into long term. So specifically, I think July volumes have been encouraging uh, and we have seen good growth and uh, looking forward to sustain that over the uh, you know, remaining nine months of this financial year. Uh, we are optimistic about demand. Uh, real estate continues to do well. Uh, polymer prices continue to be affordable. Any um, movement upwards or downwards will be range bound. Uh, which is very conducive for industry growth as well as growth for the branded players. Um, as far as uh, three to five years, you know, we are the way we are adding capacity. We look forward to, uh, you know, high double digit growth over a three to five year uh, period. And uh, despite entering into water tanks and bathware, I think we continue to be extremely bullish about the pipe segment. And your last point about competitive intensity and everyone adding capacity, I think this has not been a new phenomena for the pipe industry. If you see the past maybe uh, five to ten years, uh, you know, the, the larger players like ourselves have always consistently added capacity uh, with a vision for the, the kind of growth that the piping industry is seeing. So I think this is just the start, actually. I think uh, we are, you know, at no point is, is, is demand going to... You know, supply w will not outpace demand, so we continue to be bullish, and industry will continue to grow. Uh, and I think with the kind of growth prospects, we don't see the need for predatory pricing. Uh, so this growth will be much more sustainable um, and, and profitable going forward. Right. right. Uh, the second question I had um, was with respect to CPVC, uh, you know, the raw material cost. Uh, what we understand is that there is a correction in the CPVC prices as well. Um, has it been the case for us as well? And, uh, you know, uh, given the supply, uh, increasing supply of CPVC in the domestic market, um, do you see uh, the, the uh, uh, overall demand supply for uh, CPVC uh, segment uh, tilting towards, uh, you know, pricing pressure? Yes, so I think there has been correction in CPVC prices uh, across the industry as well as for uh, uh, us. 
and we we do believe that there is more room for corrections. Uh, you, we have seen the steep correction in PVC, uh, so that is bound to follow in CPVC, maybe with a slight lag, but with the kind of local capacities that are coming in in India, uh, you know there is further room for correction in CPVC. Uh, having said that, for the long term, I think this is a very good uh, phenomena uh, because end of the day, we believe supply creates demand and when there is going to be local capacity in India, um, that is going to make CPVC more affordable. Um, and for CPVC to grow, the way PVC has local capacity and affordable pricing is very important. So I think uh, this affordability in CPVC boards well for growth from a you know, five-year-plus perspective. Um, so that's how we see the CPVC market. Got it. Uh, just one more uh, question, uh, you know, with respect to the uh, plumbing business. Uh, you know, if we look at last uh, few uh, quarters, stroke years, we've seen the plumbing growth has been fairly good in terms of volume. Uh, is that understanding right? I'm not talking just about 1Q or 4Q. Uh, or last four, five years, the plumbing growth has been in uh, double digit. Is that a fair assessment for us and the industry? So industry, I don't know if it would be double digit, but for us, definitely it has been double digit. Uh, I think if you, you know, the, apart from this couple of quarters, the growth actually has been largely driven by building material because PVC had become uh, unaffordable and extremely high, which impacted agri. Uh, despite which, you know, there was a healthy performance. So that was largely driven by building material. So plumbing has grown uh, over the past few years for the industry as well as for us. Um, and for us, our focus is towards building material uh, going forward as well. Um, and I think with the way real estate is, uh, I think the next two to three years at least, we are excited about growth in plumbing and SWR. And we are accordingly setting up uh, capacities as well. Got it. Uh, just a couple of data uh, uh, bookkeeping question. Basically, with respect to CAPEX, uh, how do we model that for FI 24 and 25 in terms of quantum and uh, which locations and what kind of capacity addition? So largely, actually, it will be uh, it will be for our uh, bottlenecking in the existing plants uh, and uh, the one which we have announced for East. So these were the two. These will be the two major who, uh, things which we'll be doing. In terms of, I'll I'll not include East right now. In terms of projecting what will be in FY24. So FY24 normal uh, existing plants will consume around 100 crores. It will be 90 to 100 crores in between uh, that 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 will be consumed for uh, internal thing. And uh, we are in a planning stage uh, of East and. Uh, by next quarter, we'll be ready with the uh, projection that how it will be flown in Q, uh, FY24 and then what will be the split in FY25. Understood, understood. And just uh, as of June, uh, what is the uh, gross debt and the cash and cash equivalent? So uh, net cash is 164 uh, uh, in our books. Uh, 40 so 40 crores is working capital uh, utilization and uh, around 195 is uh, the cash equivalent in our books. Perfect. So this is very helpful. Thank you and wish you all the best. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Our next question is from the line of Chirag Lodea from ValueQuest. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on good set of numbers. So my first question was on overall capacity utilization. At a company level, what kind of utilization we are and also if you can highlight for Telangana plant. So utilization, uh, you know, steady state has been around 50-55% uh, on installed capacity. Of course, Q1 it would be slightly lower because of the uh, disruptions. And Telangana, actually, uh, we have seen, you know, good uh, utilization in the first few quarters since the plant has been set up in uh, end of 21. So I think Telangana capacity utilization would be around 35-40%. Uh, 
uh, in terms of realization you know if you see this quarter it has uh, gone down sharply and the reason you explained is the mix change etc uh, going ahead what kind of realization one should expect given the pvc price is stabling at this level so i think uh, obviously this like you correctly said this quarter the realization per ton was uh, lower because of the unfavorable pipe fitting ratio and product mix so this will improve from here on um it's hard for me to quantify but it will be higher than what it is today uh, because in the market we have you know as we are investing in branding our pricing power has also improved over the past few years um, and product mix also has improved over the long term and this will continue so uh, tough for me to put a number on it but it will improve from here on uh, as we have normalized right and just lastly on uh, sourcing mix how, how would be our sourcing mix now sourcing for uh, pvc, PVC resin yeah so sourcing for pvc is a uh, 60 40 split 60 import 40 domestic and uh, yeah that's how it is oh thank you anand thank you thank you Our next question is from the line of Tananjay Bagrodia from ASK. Please go ahead, sir. Um, um, just a couple of questions. I think some of my questions have never been answered. Just a couple of questions in regarding now uh, ERP implementation. Uh, is everything done with and now going ahead? Will it be uh, back to normal? Yes, our uh, performance from this quarter onwards will be normalized. Okay. And second part on the bathway faucet, where just any like now that you all have an idea what's happening in the market, what uh, competitors are doing, what our plan positioning, any uh, strategies if you could tell us like what is our right to win in this segment and what we're doing uh, compared to the others, because if you see there have been some large players who haven't really grown over time. Obviously they've reached a larger scale. Uh, we're starting off in a smaller space, uh, smaller scale. Sorry. So anything which we could share on our side. Yes, so you know, Dhanjay, we've always uh, believed that in any business, uh, be it pipes, bathware, or water tanks, uh, there is no one clear right to win. You have to do a lot of small things right, um, and we believe first and foremost in investing in the right people uh, who have the experience of that business, um, which is what we've been able to do by getting the team from the incumbent. Um, after that, invest heavily in branding. uh this is the front of the wall product so brand equity becomes even more important than the the pipes uh and water tanks vertical uh and uh, you know we already have a very strong distribution network across urban uh, semi urban and rural india uh where we have to cross sell bathware so we are very clear that this is not going to yield overnight results there is a lot of patience uh, that we will have to give but it's a 15000 crore um industry where 65% of the industry is organized uh and uh 35% is unorganized uh and this will continue to grow uh double digit over the next uh, few years and we believe we have the the right product the right service infrastructure which is very critical uh the right team and the right distribution network to create value over the long term and like what is our go to strategy are we going to be going directly to builders more are we going to do the d2c where we like shop by shop open uh so you know initially we'll take whatever we can get so it's going to be a combination of retail and projects um retail of course takes time for the the brand to build um builders it it has to be a slightly more it's a very different kind of selling more relationship driven more price driven um so it will be a combination of both uh, more focus on retail and distribution because that's a sustainable strategy over the long term and have we been able to do any tie ups with uh, any of the builders who are considering now we're seeing a uh, real estate project launches happening significantly so any of the larger players have we been, have we working on like doing a tie up with them or anything along those lines yeah of course i think that's a key part of the you know strategy and luckily for the pipes business it's been 3 years now that we've set up the uh projects vertical and we've been able to become a preferred brand for a lot of large uh, real estate developers and now it's a point of you know leveraging those relationships to to uh, sell bathware as well so 
it's still very early days we've just had our first invoice uh, in this month uh, so those uh, things will fall into the place over the next few months and just last one question on pie segment we've seen other players obviously at stronger volume growth which we weren't able to because of our erp implementation but let's say going ahead would we be able to uh, recoup all that or is that something which will then take time to re recoup the lost market share so i don't see it as lost market share of course uh, the you know q1 volumes were impacted despite which we were able to do this kind of a high double digit growth uh, so i think from from this quarter onwards we, we you know we we are optimistic about demand um, all our three applications of building material agri and infrastructure are well poised for short term as well as long term growth and we have the capacity uh, and the the uh, distribution to to uh, participate in this so uh, we are optimistic about growth and what would be capex hello yeah sir what would be capex number for you your voice is actually uh, what breaking. what would be your capex number for this year so uh, as i said uh, uh, the capex number will range in between 90 to 100 excluding uh, the east project uh the the break up of east uh, we will be giving in q2 when we will finalize the drawing plan and the execution plan the split okay. between fy24 and fy23 okay thank huh? you thank you we have a next question from the line of chirag lodaya from value quest please go ahead uh just on capacity side i wanted to understand what kind of uh, Uh, what size we are looking for is ballpark yeah so it will be in two phases chira uh, phase 1 will be um, 40000 ton 35 to 40000 ton and phase 2 will 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 take it from there right and in terms of uh, in brownfield capacity addition in existing plant Uh, are we considering any of those and which are the plants where you know we can do this brownfield expansion so from an infrastructure so yes we are considering certain deep bottlenecking um you know in especially in dwc hdp uh, water tanks and some of course in the core of pvc cpvc as well so from an infrastructure point of view we are actually able to add capacity uh, at the jaipur telangana uh, haridwar and dadra uh, all these plants uh we can add capacity that's how the infrastructure is set up some of the plants like uh, athal kolhapur um and chennai are slightly strapped for um, further you know major capacity addition uh, but i think i would say four out of the existing seven plants we do have infrastructure to uh, have some kind of brownfield as in when the demand uh, uh, requires it and generally what is the lead time to add brownfield capacity Three to four months. Okay. Right. Okay. And uh, another thing was on overall infra side. You know, there is a lot of demand, etc. So, are we also aggressively participating in that? Uh, we are participating, maybe not as aggressively because we want to be very conscious of uh, receivables. So, you know, it doesn't really make sense to stretch the balance sheet uh, to participate in this demand because already it is low margin. um and at one side for the retail and projects business we are trying to significantly improve the debtor days so we will participate and uh, dwc segment has actually seen very strong growth over the past two years if you see the volume kegers have been uh, very encouraging um hdp also has been good but we are uh, careful about the receivables so we will we will grow steadily uh, in the infrastructure as well right right and on overall margins front uh, i mean with improvement in overall utilization over next two years you know, do you see our margins moving beyond like 13 14% so medium term i think 13 14% is a, a fair uh, estimate uh, are we happy with that no uh, we are aspirational for a better pro, uh, you know operating margin and that will come as product mix improves as cpvc contribution grows as operating leverage like you correctly said uh, improves and we start moving uh, closer to 180 200 kt i think those operating leverage will also be beneficial um, as cost absorption will be better 
and I think some of the new products that we have come into uh, within piping, like the modern plumbing, uh, surface drainage products, and low noise piping, as well as once bathware scales up, I think this kind of a product mix um, will help improve the margins. Uh, but that would be over the long term. Uh, for now, our focus has to be on sustaining, um, you know, the 12 to 14 percent operating margin, and have uh, industry-leading volume growth. Got it. And in terms of <clears throat> this bathware launch, etc., so initially, definitely there will be, you know, investments going behind this. So, what kind of, you know, initial losses you are expecting over say one or two years? Uh, some ballpark number. Three. So I think in 1Q, the launch uh, that we did with the Pan India Distributor Conference in Goa, I think that cost was approximately around 2 crores, which is obviously one time. Uh, and over the, you know, on an annual basis, I think 5 to 6 crores of an investment into uh, manpower and 10 to 12 crores of investment into brand building for exclusively for the bathware vertical. Okay. Okay. Very clear. Thank you, Anand. Thank you, Chiran. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants, may we request you to limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. The first question was on Bihar. Uh, so essentially, east and north east, right? Uh, what's the market size there, you know, and how much does Trin uh, sell today there? Because I'm looking at it from a perspective of rate saving going forward. Uh, and secondly, obviously, I know that you mentioned that, you know, the plan is not ready yet. Uh, and it will be in phases, but uh, more direction on, you know, what's the thought process here? It, my sense is it should be like more integrated complex, uh, which will have uh, most of your product uh, across pipes and you know value added products. Uh, if yeah. you could give some more color in terms of what's your plan, uh, you know, for this market, what sells there and what does not. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so yes, you are right. This is going to be more of a complex, um, where in the long term, we will have uh, all kinds of pipes, PVC, CPVC. DWC, HDP, um, water tanks uh, we will have from day one, and fittings um, as well, you know, is a part of our long-term strategy at East. So initially we may start with a small capacity of fittings, but we will scale that up. So in the long term, maybe, uh, you know, three years from today, I can see Bihar uh, plant being one of the largest plants for Prince Pipe. So we are... Um, very bullish on the eastern market, the kind of growth that we have seen without having a local plant. It's currently we are only having outsourced in east that too only for one or two product categories. So the moment we have an entire basket that we're able to sell locally in east, I think, uh, you know, there can be very strong growth across segments of uh, building material and infrastructure as well as um, across pipes, fittings and water tanks. Um, this eastern market, to, to answer your last question, what sells, what doesn't sell, I think pretty much uh, everything sells like PVC, CPVC, underground drainage. Maybe it's not as heavy on agriculture as uh, the, the rest of the country for obvious uh, reasons. Uh, but apart from that, I think we are very confident of being able to cross-sell our entire uh, product range of pipe-fitting tanks um, across PVC, CPVC, HDP, uh, and LLDP. So, like I said, in three years from now, this will be a large complex and one of the largest facilities uh, in Prince Pines. So, uh, as of now, the East region sales for Prince is, would be like what kind of mix today? Uh, so, we do we do not give out uh, geographical breakups for uh, competitive reasons. Uh, so, but today would be around 15 to 20 percent. So, so there is a freight handle here, right? I mean, this entire 20% is either outsourced or it's supplied from some other plant, which obviously will better the quality once you have your own plant, and whatever you source from other locations should save some money for sales, right? Correct. So, even initially, I would like to pass on that trade benefit uh, to the channel to ramp up capacity utilization. I think the more important, uh, maybe low-hanging fruit is obviously 
uh, being able to rain cell by having everything under one roof. Um, and uh, obviously, you know, quality of in-house manufacturing is, is always going to be, you cannot compare that to outsource. So I think uh, we are excited about the cross-selling opportunity as well as uh, the, the in-house control on quality. Got it. And last question on bathware. Uh, I'm not sure whether we are having our you know, own facility here or doing outsourcing right now. Just started, but uh, just three to five year thought process. I think uh, we've seen uh, you know faucets and sanitary ware premium products doing in house and you know everything else outside is a good uh, kind of ROC perspective. But uh, your thoughts on how would you think about your bathware? in terms of in-house outsource uh, and brand building going forward, three to five years, not short term. Yeah, I think obviously uh, manufacturing for faucets is, is, um, needs to be in-house. Um, so you know, over the next uh, 12 to 18 months, we would like to have in-house uh, manufacturing. We are actively looking for opportunities. So, uh, you know, at the right time, we will, we will have that. So within 18 months, we should uh, have that. Um, and as far as brand building is concerned, see, we are, we are very clear that investing in brand has to be a long-term strategy, uh, has to be seen as an investment, not as an expenditure, especially for a product which is front of the wall. I think a lot of brand building uh, has to be done. Here, the target audience also is slightly different compared to pipes. Uh, pipes for retail is the plumber uh, or the farmer um, is the influencer. And for uh, the project segment, it would be maybe a contractor um, or the builder. Whereas for bathware, you know, there are architects, interior designers, uh, developers themselves, and homeowners. I think that is a very big part of the overall value chain for bathware, uh, that the homeowner themselves also is engaged. Uh, so I think extensive investments need to be made across digital, uh, across having uh, visual merchandising, the touch and feel kind of product. Um, as well as, you know, brand visibility from an um, ATL uh, point of view by having visibility across hoardings or, uh, you know, across media. So this is something that we will invest in, we will continue to invest in. Um, for us, we have always been very clear while taking the decision to come into Bathware, this is going to be a long-term uh, strategy which we need to commit to, and we are fully committed to that in terms of investing in brand, people, um, and uh, technology. So you said uh, five six crores per year on manpower, ten to twelve crores for brand building. That basically is about sixteen seventeen crores. Uh, on a net basis, I would imagine a five crore. You will, would you restrict yourself to like five six crores of losses? That's say initial two years, or uh, is that something which lays on your mind? So, see, we have to be. We are prepared for making an investment into this. Uh, there is no one, uh, you know, particular X number in mind, but I think within 18 to 24 months, this, you know, is, is the maximum we can give in terms of uh, uh, bathware bleeding into core margins. I think from, uh, you know, after six to eight quarters, it should become uh, non-dilutive uh, into the core business. So I think that's a, a realistic way of looking at things. Okay, because my sense is even if you break even, it will still be dilutive, right? So obviously we are not talking about 13, 14% of bathware margin at least three years out, right? Yeah, so you're obviously right. even if they make 5%, they'll still be diluted. You're right. So maybe diluted is not the right word, but it bleeding into the core uh, profitability. Uh, we are very clear that in the long term, this is going to be a, uh, you know, better business in terms of operating margins over the long term. If you see the... Uh, performance of the, the current brands in the bathware segment. So over the long term, definitely it is going to be profitable. Uh, so we have to be prepared for this kind of investment in the short term. Perfect. Thank you so much. All the best, Nehal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Praveed Sahai from Prabhudas Leeladar. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you for taking my question. Uh, so the first one is uh, uh, like uh, the value-added uh, products uh, you have. Uh, can you give some uh, color like how much is the contribution right now? Uh, and uh, 
also on the like which all you considered as a value added so currently it's you know cpvc and ppr systems as well as pvc fittings tend to be value added and how much contribute to your top line so i think pipe fitting ratios historically have been fitting has consistently been 30 to 35% of revenue uh, which was obviously significantly lower in q1 which impacted the performance but pipe fitting ratios uh, i think 30 to 35% revenue comes from fitting and uh, cpvc and ppr you know cpvc has been 20 to 25% of revenue um, and ppr has been around 4 to 5% No, okay and uh, one thing on the one off uh, expenses for a quarter uh, as you had already mentioned to crowd uh, bathware launches uh, is there any one off uh, of a erp as well because last quarter call you had said 90% uh, cost has been absorbed in therefore 23 so is there a uh, something in this quarter as well or uh, the sponsor cost uh, the movie sponsor cost is it treated as a one off Uh, what are exactly all three for uh, one of uh, you had seen in this quarter and how much that so uh, apart from bath uh, what nihar mentioned about two pros uh, there is uh, n- there is nothing like one off in this quarter the erp related expenses are treated as intangible where, wherever it is applicable and it has gone into the gross block and uh, the operating expense obviously has come to the pnl which is uh, not uh, which is not significant and uh, so one of is only bathware related expense okay and uh, also on the clarification on your capex part uh, as you have mentioned 90 to 100 odd crore for f24 uh, is it not including the land acquisition which uh, you know mentioned in the opening remark that's uh, for a bihar you had already acquired land so uh, the 90 to 100 is purely uh, for our existing plants it does not include uh, anything of east uh, east as i mentioned uh, the the breakup the split between 24 and 25 uh, will provide in q2 uh, so 90 to 100 is purely on the existing plants so this just to add to what anand said this 90 to 100 crores is for existing plants for debottlenecking for maintenance and to maybe adding capacity uh, for some of the newer products like water tanks um or hdp in certain uh, facilities so mm-hmm. that's thank oh. you got it sir thank you and all the best thank you pravin thank you thank you our next question is from the line of sneha talreja from nuwama please go ahead Good afternoon, sir, and thanks a lot for the opportunity. Just a couple of questions from my end. Why do you say there are no one-off? Hello. Please go ahead. Yeah. Why do you say there are no one-offs apart from bathware division? Is there any inventory loss in this particular quarter? Yes. So uh, there is an inventory loss. It's not very significant. Uh, around uh, 10 crores of inventory loss in Q1. All right, but with the current PVC prices moving up, do you see inventory gains in the second quarter, like the leader mentioned, that can offset uh, inventory losses uh, in Q1? Do you also see similar trend, or uh, uh, is there any other opinion here? So I think we'd like to be conservative. I think it's still the middle of the quarter. Uh, I think it's more likely to it comes with a lag effect. So I think more likely in the third quarter, but. I think we still a long way to go so I'll I'll not comment on you know I don't want to speculate on that setting today. Sure, got it. And your second question on the volume run rate while in a lot of your comments you mentioned that you know you would be wanting to do industry leading growth. Uh this particular quarter you've already done 19% and you're mentioning double digit growth for the full year. I would want you to give a specific range at least like example the leader is mentioning 23 to 25% where do you see that growth run rate because I'm speaking on let's speak about Q2 itself you're sitting at a low base of minus 10% volume growth so that definitely means it will be you know growth looks like you know upwards of 20% so where do you see this range because double digit could be anywhere between a 10 and it could be also be higher of 30 and you also mentioned industry leading growth so just confused there you know what what is the sort of growth that you're looking at in uh, FI 24. So 
so i think so yeah i think industry leading growth is always on a medium term to long term quarter on quarter there could be up or down um and other players are, are you know they every organization is different and will have their own style of guiding the street uh, we are very clear since the ipo we have always been very conservative um so i will stick to a guidance uh, of double digit that may not be the answer that you want to hear but i think it's still the middle of the quarter we have a long way to go uh, we are aspirational for growth and we are aggressive internally to to uh, have a high growth and and that's how we are putting up capacity aggressively um but sitting today for the you know entire financial year i think we are confident of uh, double digit growth and i will stick to that but fair to assume your q2 will definitely be higher than your q1 and h2 definitely is higher than your you know h1 in a normal circumstances we can put the number as is but then just giving this uh, break up to you no i will uh, i will stay away from that it's uh, i i don't think we can put a that q2 growth is going to be higher than q1 or any of that q1 as you are aware it is agri heavy 